Yo, what's going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new deck profile video. Today I'm excited to bring you guys an update for my Infernoble Sinful Spoils deck. I took this deck to a 3v3 about a week and a half ago and ended up going undefeated. Our team as a whole ended up going 3-2, but I had a pretty good run for myself and I'll go over the matchups towards the end of the video. Also took this deck to a locals on Halloween actually. Ended up going undefeated there as well and uh, won a cool mat. Nothing super crazy, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys the list. The list between the 3v3 and the locals um, didn't really change that much. And I plan on changing this deck going forward, but I really haven't tested a lot of those changes yet. So I want to just show you guys the list that I ran um, in those events and kind of give my reasonings behind them. Where some of the inspiration for some of these choices came from. And yeah, hope you guys are going to enjoy this deck profile. Like always, please consider checking out the links to support the channel down in the description below. Uh, Imperium Duelist, TCG Player, etc, etc. And importantly, if you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. And also leave a like if you end up joining the video as well. Helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. So with all that being said, let's hop right into the deck profile. So starting with the monsters, first and foremost, we have arguably one of the most broken things about this deck is this engine right here, the Neospace Connector Package. Uh, I'm always surprised by the amount of people that don't actually know what this card does. It's happened quite a few times where I'll summon Neospace Connector, my opponent will look very puzzled, and they'll ask what it does. I'm like, you're about to learn. I'll tell you what, this card is so good. The hand knowledge is incredible, even if you're not ripping anything out of the hand. And on top of that, with the Sinful Spoil stuff, going for the double hand rip with Connector's sort of secret effect has never been easier to do. So... Really amazing engine, not cutting it anytime soon. I'll play it till they ban it if they even ever do that. So uh, yeah, definitely like it. The only thing about this engine, and one thing I've been experimenting with lately is siding this engine out, going second only, just because this engine isn't that great going second into an already established field. And I know with Pax List, he was siding the cashier package, which is definitely very interesting. It's something I might try going forward i know in the past and you guys will probably know with the one deck one month series is i did try out maining that engine for a little while and it was really nice you know with the ahashima line and the extra deck etc etc uh, but siding it seems kind of nice because in theory i'm thinking just right now that you could potentially side this package out this four card package out going second and replace it with Fenrir uh, because Fenrir is a much better going second card than connector is especially going into again an already established board and uh, Dolphin is a warrior much like uh, Riseheart is, and it also happens to be a fire warrior. So it's board breaker plus potential way to search engine, um, which this is only half of that, right? So food for thought, something I might try going forward. Uh, and then moving on, I have two copies of Ogier. This is something I was playing at one for the 3v3. And while I didn't really, really miss the second copy, uh, I wanted to bump up the card count of the deck by adding in a few more going second cards, uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to thin out on starters, so I actually ended up adding a second Ogier, just because this is a really nice card to see um, in most situations, and even if you see Connector and Ogier together, Ogier is a more than perfect discard off of the, the Dolphin, um, so yeah, but I can definitely get behind playing one of these. I'm just partially worried about, like, not drawing um you know a good solid starter most of the time when it actually matters uh, and then moving on we have two copies of renault another card that i know some people have opted to play um as a one of but in my logic um i think opening this card is not necessarily a bad thing then you could probably say well why not play three if you want to open it all the time and that's honestly a fair point um i guess it's just one of those sometimes but uh, all the time things and I know that's not the best explanation, but I really have been enjoying it too. I haven't hated it, but I think going forward, I might consider playing just one, but it definitely does seem risky, uh, especially when you consider how popular Horus is and Tier Lament is, the opponent milling your deck. Um, milling one ofs is definitely something I am concerned about, uh, especially when it comes to things like OG or Renault and how powerful these cards are. Are respectively in this deck alone so um, I don't mind playing two essentially of some of the more important cards in the deck 
uh, whereas I think three would necessarily be overkill. And then speaking of one ofs, we do have uh, quite a few in this deck, but with how many rotas and ways to search cards we have, it kind of makes sense because like, um, it just leaves room for non-engine, which this deck has notoriously struggled uh, to fit in the main deck for quite some time. Um, and when you open a bunch of rotas, you can kind of sculpt your hand uh, by grabbing whatever situational extenders you need at any given point. And one of those is Oliver. Uh, we have Turpin. We also have Magus. I think uh, Magus is definitely a mandatory card in my opinion, just because uh, the engine recycling is like second to none important. And also uh, just equipping this in the end phase uh, to be able to then send off with your Link Charles or your Gear Free to draw on the opponent's turn is always nice. And, you know, equipping it to SP Little Knight is also huge because it happens to be a warrior monster. And while it does, you know, only have 600 attack, the fact that we can make it so it can't be destroyed by battle is pretty huge because that is oftentimes how they are going to out your SP Little Knight. And uh, the Modus just says no to that. Even when you do use the SP Little Knight effect, you can just trigger Modus once it hits the grave after SP has removed yourself from the field. Um, so those are some one ofs and surprise, surprise, we have a few more. Uh, in that of the Gear Freed, the Ricky Ardetto, and the Fire Flint Lady. Um, yeah, all very standard things in the deck that really don't need explanations. Ricky Ardetto has just gotten so, so much more better with the advent of the Sinful Spoil stuff. It's one of the best targets for Snake Eye, not only in this deck, but honestly in the game outside of Fire Hydrant. Um, the fact that we can just summon this out of the deck at any point to reborn, you know, a Turpin or an Ogier. Uh, mid combo or after we've been interrupted with like maybe Joel Lockbird or whatever may be like Nibiru be able to keep playing and extending past those very impactful hand traps is huge not to mention the recovery um, and resources that engine provides outside of just summoning Ricky Ardetto or Renault or Fire Flint Lady um, from the deck uh, so yeah definitely got to play those and then speaking of the sinful so spoils package one Diabell Star um, just because I don't think you need more than one, at least not in this deck. Then three copies of Wanted and the one copy of the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eyes. Uh, I'll be completely honest, I totally didn't even know um, that uh, any of these cards had secret effects. Like, I, I, I didn't know that this card had the ability to put this back and draw a card. And the entire time I was at the 5v5, I think I remembered to use that effect like once or twice. And uh, things probably could have gone a lot better had I actually remembered it had those effects. And then the other effect of this uh, as well, which I know it's very good, it adds a level one fire. I've never resolved it. I keep forgetting it, but going forward, I definitely won't be forgetting it because adding something like Renault or Ricky Ardetto or whatever it may be uh, for follow up is very, very nice. Then we have three copies of Noble Arms Museum. I know some people play terraforming. Um, I know Pac was playing terraforming in his list. I personally don't get playing terraforming. Um, I think it's just a droll magnet essentially because I know some people are still maining droll and lockbird and rightfully so. And if they're not maining it, they're siding it. Um, and it's not that this deck dies instantly to droll. It's just there's already so many rotas in the deck. I don't think adding one more to the deck is super, super important, especially when you take into account that Heritage can search the uh, museum and also Angelica can search out your museum as well. I never really had an issue uh, getting to museum, but I guess if you argue that you want to see multiple museums, then I guess fair enough. Um, but I haven't really missed or wanted to play something like terraforming uh, in all my, my time playing this deck, so. Now going on, we have three copies of Heritage, and speaking of Rotas, right here we have a few more, and speaking of Rota, there is the Rota. Um, so yeah, just all good standard warrior search cards, and a few more Rotas, and if you want to count, this, this is technically a Rota as well. Uh, two Drendels and one copy of All Mace, uh, Infernoble Arms. Uh, yeah, and then I am still playing uh, Infernoble Arms Joyous, uh, however you pronounce that. Um, as a one of, I know some people have opted to cut this for Angelica's Angelic Ring, and I really like that card. I just don't like the idea of playing it in the main deck. Uh, it is very good for stopping as a Dark Ruler. Super Pally, it's great in time, and in my opinion, all those things sound better outside of game one or when I know I'm going to be going first in games two or three. 
Um, I'd rather just have it in the deck then and keep Joyous in the deck um, just because it's another name for Museum. Uh, makes it so I can resolve Museum in certain situations where I wouldn't be able to only having um, these three Noble Arms cards in the deck. And I, I do quite like the resource recursion. Um, there's also been some interesting uh, scenarios where um, you can like set up Gear Freed on the opponent's turn by using Joyce's secret effect. Um, so like if you were able to dump this off of a sold, you can equip it to your Charles link during the end phase, right? And then once something on your board that this card is equipped to gets cleared, you can summon a Gear Freed from your hand per se that you might have added off of a sold during the previous turn, right? So it's kind of another way to set up like an interruption during the opponent's turn. Um, that they'll have to worry about. Is it necessary? No, you don't have to play this. I just personally prefer playing Joyous in the main deck uh, over something like Angelica's Angelic Ring. Uh, then moving on, we have our mandatory Divine Sword of Phoenix Blade and DDR. Um, definitely can't play without these two. They're extremely important to the strategy. And then we have some non-engine here to uh, take up the remaining slots of the deck. We have three copies of Ash Blossom, just two copies of Nibiru, uh, three copies of Forbidden Droplet, which I have been liking this card quite a bit, although uh, I am kind of leaning towards dropping it for something maybe like Effect Veiler, um, although Droplet hasn't been terrible. Um, this was inspired by uh, Rudy Torres' uh, Top 32 YCS Indie list. Um, I saw that he was playing uh, the Droplets in there and just figured I'd give it a shot and ended up really liking it. Uh, and then just three copies of Infinite Impermanence, just because it's infinite and permanence and it's really never been a bad card. And uh, yeah, that's the main deck. It is 43 cards. Uh, and again, I was playing 40. I was pretty much playing um, almost card for card Rudy's list for the 5v5, except my extra deck and the side deck was slightly different. Um, and now this is a 43 card list added in with the Nibiru's and the third OGR. Um, and also I'm not playing the Angelic Ring in the main deck. Um, yeah, so some of the main differences there. Um, and uh, yeah, now we'll go into the extra deck here where we have uh, one Link Spider. Uh, I was playing Underworld Goddess, but I see the value of playing Link Spider now just because like you can turn a Nibiru token into this and then either with an extender make SP Little Knight or you can now send this off with Snake Eye because Snake Eye specifically says that you have to send the monster to the graveyard and you cannot send a token to the graveyard just because of game mechanics. So having Link Spider works great. Um, I also thought about Relinquished Anima, but I'm not really sure what I would cut for it at this point just because I really like some of the flex spots that I have picked out here in the extra deck already. Uh, then we have two copies of Blue Chew Chuck, aka Emperor Charles the Great. Um, yeah, I think two is pretty standard. There really isn't much to say there. Then we have one SP Little Knight. Um, I've seen lists that play two. I don't have enough money to get my hands on a second copy right now. And even if I did, I don't really know if I would really want to play a second copy. Um, this card is fantastic, don't get me wrong. And in some simplified game states where you've either been hand trapped to death or you know, whatever it may be, I could see where having a second copy could be very, very advantageous to kind of just keep grinding. Um, definitely two copies of a sold. That's not changing anytime soon. Uh, then the flex spots I was opting to play was Unicorn and Access Code. I've never really been a fan of playing these two cards in here, um, just because I've always been thinking like, oh, well, I'm probably going to be warrior locked, etc., etc., etc. But during the 5v5 and even during, um, I believe during locals, I could be mistaken, because um, it's been a couple days, but I know specifically during the 5v5, this package came up quite a bit um, to, to go for a game, especially when I was hit with D-Barrier. Oh yeah, it definitely came up during Locals too, because um, I did get hit with D-Barrier, and just being able to go Unicorn into Access Code, um, just go for the 5300 Access Code, and just be able to really put pressure on and go for a game, I think is very, very important. Uh, so whereas having the second SP really won't help you do that, just because like you, when you use the effect, you can't attack directly. Uh, but Unicorn and Access Code provide some really, really good um, ways to just break boards and go for a game. Unicorn is also a great out to Typhon. You could also argue that the SP Little Knight is as well. Um, but, you know, I just, I'm just preferring to have uh, the extra utility in this deck be kind of like, um, you know, outfitted to these cards here specifically because they are pretty, pretty nice. Uh, especially when you like resolve like a sold, um, you know, turn three and you have a bunch of extra bodies laying around, you can just kind of link climb and do an access code. And if you play your cards right, um, you'll usually have like a dark, a light, and a fire 
in your graveyard. So Axis Code can pop three things, which is definitely a very nice luxury to have, I will say. Uh, then the last Link 4 we have is one Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. I was playing the Underworld um, Goddess of the, uh, the Closed World, specifically for an out to Noir, but I've never... It's never come up against pearly matchups, which I know is one of the harder matchups. Also, just one of the better decks of the format in general. Uh, but the way I look at it is like if they hard make Noir, there really isn't a world where I'm going to be able to get that many bodies on field uh, without my opponent exhausting some of those effects and just either hand trapping me to death or, um, you know, just spinning things back to the bottom of my deck. And I'm probably never going to get the chance to uh, go for an Underworld Goddess. Maybe that's, you know you know, being a little um, naive, I guess, but I don't know, maybe maybe it could work, but right now I, I think I'd just rather side other cards to beat Noir instead of just playing an extra deck slot for it. Um, then we have one Dempsey, just because it's mandatory for the combo. And then for the Synchros, one Angelica. Haven't missed the second one. Um, and also I will say playing Joyous is nice too, um, because you can recycle some of your extra deck stuff, at least if there isn't some weird ruling behind that where you can't. Um, you can recycle extra deck stuff like he one of like Angelica or Charles Synchro. Uh, and then we're also playing the two Roland. I like playing double Roland, uh, not only because when you bring Angelica back, you now have like an, a valuable, like you can actually resolve her effect again, which is so, so important. Um, like just to keep up like tempo with your deck. Um, but sometimes actually just synchroing into a second one mid combo is actually just really nice to have. Uh, and sometimes even resolving its effect, um, which you can do still in one of the combo lines and end on like so many cards in hand. And then one Infernoble Knight, Emperor Charles, and one Baron de Fleur, just because these two cards are just mandatory in the deck. Really not much else to say there. Now onto the side deck, we have three copies of Bestial Druusworm, mainly for Unchained, uh, Tier Lament as well. This card is great in those matchups and other miscellaneous matchups uh, like Dragon Link potentially. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have the same carryover um, in those matchups as it does for the Pearly matchup because it can't hit spells um, and just cards in general like DD Crow can. So I might switch this to DD Crow, but there is a really, really cool combo that um, I haven't gotten to pull off yet, but I learned this uh, from Rudy and I, I don't want to take credit for it um, because this is a really, really cool line. But if you have Druusworm plus any way to Ogier, um, there's a really, really cool combo that you can do. Like, let's say you uh, drew a Swarm, like a Murley, or whatever it may be, right? And it's on your field. They pass turn. If you have any way to Ogier, and you have tons of ways to Ogier in the stack, uh, you can normal Ogier, dump Turpin, and then Turpin effect equipped to Ogier. Now Ogier is a tuner. So you can then synchro off of these um, into Baron, and then proc the effect of Drew Swarm uh, to send a special summon monster on the opponent's field. Then you can use Ogier to equip to the Baron. Now it can't be destroyed by card effect, Baron effect to try to pop something, right? And then maybe bait out and negate. And then from here, you can use Turpin's effect and Grave to special summon itself. Then you can link off the Baron and the Turpin into either SP Little Knight to remove yet another card, or you can go into a soul. And you know, when you said that, uh, I was like, wow, that's really, really amazing. That's a lot of pressure to apply off of just a Bestial and an Ogier. Like that's like, so many ways of removal. It's just unfortunate that this isn't that great against Pearly, and uh, Pearly begin becomes a lot more popular, um, you know, because it's still a really, really good deck. Um, you know, maybe this will get replaced by DD Crow, but of course, Unchained is also still really popular. Tierman is also still really popular. Um, this also doesn't have, I guess, um, you know, any uh, relevance in the mirror match also. So, I mean, it has that kind of going against it. So maybe it probably should just be DD Crow, but I got to say the Druus Worm play with Ogier is very sauce. And I, I am biased towards that because of that. Uh, three Droll and Lockbird, just because Droll and Lockbird is Droll and Lockbird. Floodgate Hand Trap is funny. Uh, then into the spells, we have two copies of Lightning Storm. This is mainly for uh, like Rescue Ace, but you could arguably also decide it in against like uh, Labyrinth or any other Floodgate deck like Runic, I guess. Um, even though against Labyrinth, you're probably just getting uh, eradicated for four, which did happen to me at the 5v5. Two copies of Herald of the Abyss. Um, should this have been Ixie's Encore? Should it be Ixie's Encore? Potentially. Um, I might try... Um, pack strategy with the cross out designators and the uh, pearly heap in the side deck. I thought that was pretty bold. 
um, siding in yet another brick alongside Rise Heart, but like, I mean, it is what it is, right? You, you can't let them get to Noir. My only issue is like if they hard make Noir, now you just have like a dead card in your main deck, which I'm sure he thought about, um, and it's just a risk he was probably willing to take. Um, but I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe it won't be Herald of the Abyss. Maybe it'll be Ixie's Encore or something going forward, or maybe just DD Crow. But I wanted something in there to like definitely have an answer to uh, Noir. Probably should have been more than two copies of this, though. Luckily, I didn't uh, get any Noirs dropped on me when I did play Pearly. Uh, then Angelica's Angelic Ring and Call by the Grave for going first specifically. Um, again, maybe uh, the, the Heralds will become crossouts. Uh, and then last but not least, just like uh, three evenly matched. And this is also for Rescue Ace, so it's like... I mean, it really depends on, like, how you're reading a tournament, I guess, what you want to side more for. Like, if you want to side more for Rescue Ace, then, like, this is something that is probably a lot more beneficial for Rescue Ace, because just seeing any one of these against, like, uh, Rescue Ace is just, like, a huge blowout. Um, but it's also not that great against things like um, Pearly. Um, it's also not that great against... Um, uh, I guess Lightning Storm... Lightning Storm's not really that great against Unchained, although I guess you could maybe argue that it is, but... Yeah, I don't know. The side deck, I feel like, definitely uh, needs the most work out of everything. Um, like I said, the only thing in the main deck that I might change going forward would maybe be the droplets. Um, and outside of that, I honestly like the deck at 43 cards. Um, the droplets, like I said, again, just might become Effect Veiler. And the side deck will probably be changed. And the extra deck, honestly, I really like too. Round one at the 5v5, I ended up trying to make this quickly. Uh, I played against a Dino deck, won that 2 0, was a new player. Uh, round two, I ended up playing against Pearly, uh, was actually a fan of the channel, so shout out to that guy. Won 2 1. And round three, I played against Labyrinth, won that 2 1. Round four, played against Flu, won that 2 0. He bricked both games. Uh, but I did get Shifter the one game, and was actually surprisingly still able to play a decent amount underneath it. And then round play five, I played against Therion, Horus, Sinful Spoils, and won that 2-1. And then uh, at the locals, again, if you want to see how those matches played out, um, I've already uploaded those matches with commentary, post-commentary from yours truly, on the channel already if you want to check it out. So yeah, that is going to do it for this deck profile. Thank you guys so much for watching. Infernoble best deck. And uh, yeah, as always, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, like always, I'd like to give a special thank you to our Divine Level channel members who are Ponystar, Cadillacs, Green, Mizfid, and HCH Cyber. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your extremely kind and continued generous support of the channel.